340 meters below the surface of the East China Sea, the shattered remains of the largest battleship ever constructed lie in two massive pieces. Her colossal 18.1-inch gun turrets twisted at impossible angles toward the seafloor. This is the IJ in Yamato, a 72,000 tons Leviathan built to be unsinkable. Yet somehow she was ripped apart with such violence that her explosion was visible from 200 kilometers away. For 40 years, the exact location of her grave remained a mystery. And when search teams finally found her, what they discovered on the seabed challenged everything naval architects thought they knew about battleship construction. How does a warship protected by 16 inches of solid steel armor end up broken in half? What force could possibly shatter the most powerful surface combatant ever to sail the oceans? And when deep sea explorers descended to document the wreck, what did the forensic evidence reveal about her final moments? The answers lie in a debris field spanning several square kilometers, where 2,498 men remain, entombed inside Japan's greatest symbol of naval power and national pride. Before we go further, note that real wartime footage and photos of some ships are scarce. So a few visuals use similar vessels, period aircraft, and deep sea scenes to help tell the story. The Yamato was laid down at Kure Naval Arsenal on November 4th, 1937, under a shroud of unprecedented secrecy. Massive canvas screens concealed her construction from American reconnaissance aircraft, and workers were forbidden from discussing even basic details of the project. When she was formally commissioned on December 16, 1941, just eight days after Pearl Harbor, the Imperial Japanese Navy unveiled a vessel that redefined naval warfare, or so they believed. At 263 meters in length and displacing 72,000 tons at full load, Yamato was the physical embodiment of the battleship doctrine taken to its absolute extreme. Her main armament consisted of nine Type 94 naval guns with a bore diameter of 46 centimeters, 18.1 inches, the largest naval artillery ever mounted on a warship. Each armor-piercing shell weighed 1,460 kilograms and could strike targets 42 kilometers away. Her armor protection was equally staggering. A 410 millimeter belt around her vitals and turret faces protected by 650 millimeters of face-hardened steel. Four steam turbines drove her to a top speed of 27 knots, roughly 50 kilometers per hour. The Japanese had poured their national pride and strategic philosophy into this single design, naming her after the ancient word for Japan itself. She was supposed to be the ship that would win the Pacific War. But here's where the story takes an ironic turn. From February 1942, Yamato served as the flagship of Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto's combined fleet, yet she spent most of the war swinging at anchor. Between August 29, 1942 and May 8, 1943, she remained stationed at Truk Lagoon for more than eight months without firing her main guns in combat, earning the derisive nickname Hotel Yamato among frustrated crew members. During the Battle of Midway in June 1942, Yamamoto commanded from Yamato's bridge, but the battleship group remained too far from the action to intervene as four Japanese carriers were destroyed. When Yamato finally saw surface action at the Battle of Leyte Gulf in October 1944, she fired her main battery but achieved minimal results against the vastly outnumbered American escort carriers and destroyers. This world's most powerful battleship had been rendered largely irrelevant by a fundamental shift in naval warfare. The supremacy of carrier-based aviation had already made the battleship obsolete. American carriers could project power hundreds of miles away, while Yamato's 42-kilometer gun range meant she had to survive getting dangerously close to an enemy that could destroy her from beyond the horizon. The strategic miscalculation was becoming brutally apparent. By April 1945, Japan was losing the war catastrophically. American forces had landed on Okinawa, bringing them within striking distance of the Japanese home islands. Emperor Hirohito personally asked naval commanders what the Imperial Navy was doing to defend Okinawa. And in response, planners conceived Operation Tengao, a mission so desperate it was essentially state-sponsored suicide. Yamato would sail to Okinawa with a light cruiser and eight destroyers, beach herself on the island, and use her massive guns as stationary artillery until she was destroyed or ran out of ammunition. The force was given only enough fuel for a one-way journey, 
On April 6, 1945, Yamato departed on her final voyage. The next day at 12.30 p.m., American reconnaissance aircraft spotted the Japanese force steaming southwest. Vice Admiral Mark Mitcher launched 386 aircraft from Task Force 58 carriers, an overwhelming aerial armada. The first torpedo struck Yamato's port side at 12.41 p.m. And for the next two hours, wave after wave of Hell Divers, Avengers, and Corsairs pummeled the battleship. Eyewitnesses reported at least 19 torpedo hits and 17 direct bomb strikes. The sustained torpedo attacks on our port side caused progressive flooding that no damage control team could counter. By 2.05 p.m., Yamato had developed a catastrophic list exceeding 120 degrees to port. Seawater flooded into her magazines and at 2.23 p.m., a massive explosion tore through the ship as her forward magazines detonated. The blast created a mushroom cloud that rose 6,000 meters into the air and was visible from 200 kilometers away. The explosion's force was so violent that it literally broke the ship in two. Of her 3,332 crew members, 2,498 were killed. Only 269 men survived. The American forces lost just 10 aircraft. It was the most lopsided demonstration of air power's dominance over surface ships in naval history. For four decades, Yamato's exact resting place remained uncertain. Survivors provided approximate coordinates, but the vastness of the East China Sea and the limitations of 1940s navigation meant the wreck could have been anywhere within a large search area. Japanese expeditions in the early 1980s began systematic searches using side-scan sonar to sweep the seabed. In 1985, search teams finally pinpointed her location at coordinates 30 degrees 22 minutes north, 128 degrees 4 minutes east, lying at a depth of 340 meters. Modern multi-beam sonar systems map the debris field, revealing the full extent of the catastrophe. The stern section, measuring approximately 165 meters, lay separated from the bow section of 98 meters by a scatter pattern of wreckage, twisted metal, and personal effects. Remotely operated vehicles equipped with high-definition cameras descended through the dark waters to document what remained. Strong currents and limited visibility at that depth made each dive challenging. But subsequent expeditions in 1999 and 2016 produced increasingly detailed surveys of the wreck. The technology allowed researchers to create three-dimensional models of the debris fool without disturbing what Japanese authorities had designated as a protected war grave. When investigators compared the sonar data and ROV footage with archival construction blueprints, the evidence was unambiguous. The hull measurements matched Yamato's exact dimensions of 263 meters when the separated sections and debris field were accounted for. The distinctive 18.1-inch gun turrets, unique in naval history, were positively identified despite their twisted orientations. The Imperial Chrysanthemum Crest with its 16-petal design remained visible on the bow section, corroded but unmistakable. The collapsed remains of her distinctive pagoda-style bridge structure matched construction photographs. Armor plate thickness measurements taken by ROV confirmed the 410 mm belt specification. Her four three-blade propellers displayed the specific dimensions and configuration detailed in naval records. The damage patterns concentrated torpedo impacts along the port side leading to progressive flooding and eventual capsizing perfectly matched survivor testimonies. Hull number markings and construction details visible in the footage corresponded with archive documentation. The Japanese government officially confirmed the wreck's identity and no doubt remained. As we carry on, a quick reminder, subscribing is the best way to support the channel and helps us keep uncovering these sunken stories and preserving maritime history. Now back to the video. The discovery of Yamato's wreck site provided answers that extended far beyond simple historical confirmation. For naval architects and military historians, the wreck offered a forensic autopsy of battleship vulnerability in the age of aerial warfare. The concentration of torpedo damage along one side demonstrated how even the most heavily armored warship could be systematically defeated by coordinated air attacks, exploiting a single axis of approach. For the families of the 2,498 men who died, the discovery brought a measure of closure after four decades of uncertainty about where their loved ones rested. 
Scientifically, the wreck has become an artificial reef colonized by deep sea marine life over eight decades, offering researchers insights into ecological succession patterns at significant depths. Culturally, Yamato remains Japan's most potent symbol of both engineering achievement and wartime sacrifice, embodying what the Japanese call Yamato Damashii, the spirit of Japan itself. The wreck serves as an underwater time capsule, preserving 1940s naval technology and providing archaeologists with an intact example of the pinnacle of battleship design. For military strategists, Yamato's fate stands as the definitive case study in how technological superiority in one domain becomes irrelevant when warfare fundamentally shifts to another domain. Under international maritime law and specific Japanese government designation, Yamato is protected as a war grave. Salvage operations are strictly prohibited, and the site may not be disturbed except for approved scientific documentation. Each year, memorial services honor the crew members who remain entombed within her hull, and the dwindling number of survivors, most now deceased, spent their final years ensuring the story of their shipmates would not be forgotten. The lesson of Yamato transcends simple military history. She represents the danger of fighting the next war with the previous war's tactics, of investing in yesterday's technology while your adversary pioneers tomorrow's battlefield. 340 meters below the surface, Yamato remains what she always was, the heaviest battleship ever constructed, now serving as the deepest grave of her kind. Her broken hull stands as an eternal monument, not to the glory of war, but to the 2,498 men whose lives were spent in a futile gesture that changed nothing about the war's inevitable outcome. They deserve better than a suicide mission. We honor their memory by remembering both their sacrifice and the strategic folly that demanded it. Yamato lies undisturbed in the darkness, a cathedral of steel where the ocean has claimed the last and greatest of the battleships and where she will remain for centuries to come.